you know, if I was surveying this and I had a background map of my data collector, I'll bet this would be a lot easy. Let me see what I got. If I just go straight up to map and I look and I say, hmm, quad with survey. Let's see what that is. Looky there. Hmm. So that little X right there is where I'm at. Hmm. So if I was to stop over here about where this X is at, you can see the black X moving on the screen. Okay, so it says right here is where it's supposed to be. Looks like I may be off. Yep, I'm off a little bit. Here it is right here. So I didn't get my image geo-referenced as well as I wanted to. But as you can see, there it is. So if I say measure, I'm going to call this point number one. I'm going to call it CP. Whoops. I don't want to drive you guys crazy by doing small letters. CP. Uh... E-R-R-S for existing railroad spike. So get level, shoot it, store. Observation stored. Okay, so I got that one. So let's see what else we got down here. So you can see as I'm moving down through here that my X is moving with me. Looks like I got it pretty close lined up this way so this is the pdf of the survey for my property and i thought hmm, i'd just show you guys how this works so uh let's go down here to this other corner see if we can find it So if I had better coordinates for this property survey, that map should land right on it. Yep, centered up. So here is a PK nail. And as you can see, I didn't miss that by much. I'm still pretty close. I've got a pistol with me. I shoot this horse fly that's buzzing around my head. Okay, this is a CP space P K nail. Get it level, measure. There it is. So there's the PK nail. Now that what's cool is, is I actually have this quad map for a background. Now then, if I want to, as you can see, I've got the survey, the legal description, everything in here for a background. So let's say that, I'm just gonna go back to the map so you can see the whole screen. And it sounds like I got a car coming. Anyways, what I wanted to show you was, here's an aerial photograph of this area and you will see that I am somewhere up in there there's the aerial photograph you can see in my points there I can get it to pan you can see I can see the whole survey. Now then, if I go and look, and I just look at the quad map, get rid of the aerial updating map, there's the quad map. So if I want to go to, uh, we were on quad in the survey, let's go to aerial. 
So as you can see, we're on top of this bridge right here. And uh, I've got the survey for a background for a PDF. How's that for cool? So I uh, went to the wrong page. Let me go here. So if I just want to do aerial photograph and I want to get rid of the survey, the way I've got this set up, I can just go straight to the aerial photograph and look at it that way. And this data comes off Maris. So um, it's uh, you can take the Maris data and download the uh, SID files. And uh, then I can bring it in, bring it back to our map. I'll, whew, it's hot out here. I'll bring a, I'll, we're going to head back to the office. That's what I'm trying to say. We're going to head back to the office and uh, I'll show you guys how to load these background maps in your data collectors. Um, with the Maris data, I can load it uh, without Business Center. And for the quad map, I was using Terrain Navigator, uh, which is actually a Trimble product. I think it's like 240 bucks, I think is what I saw for the software. But, uh, and you can create quad maps for backgrounds. And there again, you don't need Business Center. To combine the two, like I did with the survey, the PDF, and the quad map, and then taking the survey and taking it back uh, to some transparency, now that you're gonna have to have Business Center for in order to do it. But if you wanna throw just an aerial photograph or you wanna throw a quad map for a background and your data collector, super easy. Maris isn't, or I say Maris, GeoViewer is the software, uh, which you should be able to load any SID file from any state in there and uh, use it so we'll get back to the office i'll show you guys how to do it okay so we just came in from outside um you guys saw how all that worked in the um in the data collector as far as background maps and stuff like that um using i was using the um, um aerial photograph and the pdf now i'm gonna show you guys how to make all that work so um, first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download uh, two pieces of software. One is going to be GeoViewer, and the other one will, if you want the quad map, you're going to need the Trimble, Trimble Terrain Navigator Pro. And I think, I've got it like for a seven-day trial, but I think that it's like 240 bucks or something. I, I don't think it'd really be worth it for me to do it, but hey, it'd be great for you guys. When I was surveying full-time, um, quad maps were essential for me in rural surveys. So, um... Let me show you guys how this works. So the first thing I'm gonna do, let's pop up the um, GeoViewer here. So, so what I've got here is a background image of my farm that I have here. So um, what I wanna show you guys is how I got here, right? So you can go onto the Maris um, repository, M-A-R-I-S. You can go to their website. You can uh, go and find their SID files is what you're looking for. Uh, the SID files of the aerial photographs. Um, in this case, you can see I've got 12 inch pixels that I'm using here, uh, mosaic. So let me show you where I've got that stored at and how I'm using this. So if I go down and I look, here's Maris. So you can see I've got um, some different files and stuff in here. So I've got the SID files um, for Stone County and I am using the Mississippi uh, 2017. There's Mr. Sid right there, Mr. Sid files, as I call them. So here's the different Sid files. So here's 12 inch. Um, so that's actually what I'm using is these 12 inch Sid files, which should be uh, 12 inch pixels, I guess is what they're saying. So um, you're gonna go to file. I'm gonna go add local layer. I'm gonna go find those files, which are right here, Maris, uh, Stone County, SID file mosaics, 12 inch, boom, once I do that, then um, that attaches the SID files to my backgrounds. So these are different SID files um, for Stone County. This covers the whole county, so that's why I'm using it. That's where my property's at. So if you use that, the SID files and um, bring those in. I mean, they're pretty decent looking background images. I mean, just kind of give you an idea. I'm not a big Google Earth guy because of this right here. See how green that image is when that image was taken? And it just looks like, um, it's just a green tint over the whole thing, 
which just aggravates the fire out of me. So you look at this image and you'll see that it's not a green tint. I don't know if it's because it's from satellite image or what, but this is a whole lot clearer to me. This isn't, isn't as up to date as Google Earth is because Google Earth actually shows a pool that I'm building in the backyard. But um, this is geo reference. This is a geo tiff um, that we're going to export out of here. And I just think it's a lot cleaner looking um, image for me. Um, and there's, there's not that much difference. It's actually, it looks like the photograph was taken before I bought the property. So, um, here's what you're going to do. So in order to get this, you can't bring a GeoTIFF as a background image into uh, Trimble Access, but you can bring a GeoTIFF image into Business Center. You can bring a JPEG or a JP, whatever, W, it's a world file, it's attached to the JPEG. You can bring that out of here and take that straight to your data collector as a background image. You don't have to have Business Center to be able to do it. But to do the PDF thing that I did, you're going to need Business Center. So let me show you how I did that. So, okay. So first of all, if I go to Tools and I go to Export and I say Export Current View, I can say GeoTIFF or I can say JPEG. So it's so like I said, GeoTIFF goes to Business Center, JPEG goes to Data Collector. That is one way to do this. So you just pick which one you want, it'll export it, you'll have the file. I've actually already exported this uh, to a business center project that I'm working on and it's going under snapshots is actually where it's going. So that's where the, excuse me, that's where the JPEGs are going is under snapshot. So let me, uh, let me get out of this right quick and I'm gonna show you Trimble Navigator Pro. So with Trimble Navigator Pro, I can zoom in. And as you can see, I get the quad map, right? Works pretty much the same way. Once you're zoomed in, you just go to file. I go to export, geo reference project, projected map. I'm saying transverse Mercator. I'm saying Mississippi East, blah, blah, blah. I say, okay. Then I can choose how I want to export it. Same thing as with the geo viewer. I can export as a geo tiff, bring that into business center. It's already geo referenced or I can take it out as a JPEG right there. When I take it as a JPEG, the world file goes with it. JPEG world file, access, GeoTIFF, Business Center, okay? So I'm not gonna take anything out of here. I just wanted to show you um, doing rural surveys. Man, having a quad map as a background on your data collector would be absolutely awesome in my opinion. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I got Business Center opened up over here. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. So I kind of cheat a little bit and I'm going to zoom in. Actually, I guess I should, yeah, I'm gonna move this up here. So I'm gonna zoom in so I can try to see where this is at. I did this a while ago and I really hosed it bad. Um, so if I zoom in, there's that fence line coming. There's a railroad spike out in the road somewhere right in there. Okay, so this step, what we're going to do is we're going to georeference the PDF that I had on the background, okay? And I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to go create a point in CAD, or in CAD, in Business Center. Um, we're going to say local. We want latitude and longitude. So we're going to copy this latitude and longitude out of Google Earth. Man, that's going to be fun to edit with all this back and forth with this screen. Um... Elevation, I'm going to say 220 feet. Okay, so there's point number one. So now I need my point number two. I'm going to go down to the other corner of the property. I'm going to zoom down here. And I mean, you can get these coordinates. I mean, wherever you feel like you can get these coordinates from and get them the most accurate, it's where you should get them from. Whether that's Google Earth or wherever, right? Um, Google Earth makes it pretty easy because I can pull the light long out and create a point and then I can geo-reference everything. So uh, if you've already surveyed a piece of property next door, you've got something in the image that you can geo-reference, you know the coordinate for the intersection or property corners or fence corners or light poles or building corners, whatever. You can use whatever you want to to geo-reference it. The better information you have, the better it's gonna geo-reference. And I can geo-reference 14 points if I want to. I don't, 20 points, 100 points, whatever. However many I wanna keep adding. Um, what uh, I'm just doing too, so I can just show you guys how this works. Copy, 
I'm going to come back over here and paste. Copy. Come back over here and paste. Elevation, I'm going to say 220. Because I don't know what it is, but I know it's something close to that. Okay, so. Now then, I could copy this image out of um, Google Earth, which has got it more updated. I mean, I, it actually shows the pool that I'm building in the backyard and everything. Um, you know, I think... I'm not sure what the heck that is. Oh, I think it's a... Well, I don't know what it is. I, my tractor or something. I don't know what that is. Problem I have with Google Earth is everything's so green. It just It's hard for me to... It's just not that great an image, I don't think so. And it's probably because it's like a satellite-based image is probably why. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go find my PDF. So I'm pretty sure I have it under survey data, Maris, Martin Farm Survey. So I've got my two points on the screen. Now this is really important because where you drop this PDF at is going to determine how difficult it is to georeference because I need to be able to see the PDF and see these points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drop it like right over here somewhere. And it landed right there in the middle of the screen. Hmm, guess I should have zoomed out some. Okay, so you can see my point number one's back here, right? So it maybe pops up to place image. Well, we're not going to place an image because it wants to do it by known distance and bearings and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here under the CAD toolbar. I'm going to say georeference image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say add. So I want to add, you know, we picked that first one. And then a location, I can just say number one. And then I can say add. And I can go right here, pick on that, and I can say point number two. Now I'll say compute. Everything should be pretty close. Okay. So we already copied the GeoTIFF image out of GeoViewer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that image and drop it in here. Um, for a background. So I actually save that under documents, Trimble Business Center, background map, and it was the aerial background. This is the GeoTIFF. I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to drop it. Oh, okay. So now I've got a background image, uh, an aerial, and I have my uh, PDF. Now then, how did I make that PDF transparent? I actually selected on the, the PDF. I go to properties underneath Project Explorer. You're going to come down here to where it says transparency. It says zero transparency. We're going to say 50% transparency. Then you can play with this and make it work however you want to. So now if I zoom down and look, you can see that I'm not bad on my georeferencing there. I probably could have added some more points or something, maybe made it a little bit better, who knows. But it's pretty close. You can see that fence line. There's that property corner. It sure is handy having that PDF as your background to be able to um, figure out where you're at and where you're going and being able to read it because I spent most of my career with a quad map or a survey folded up in my back pocket with a Kaiser blade in my hand. And especially this time of year, uh, we're rolling into July and um, after about three hours, you can't read your your survey, your PDF that you had printed out anymore because um, it, you're all soaking wet with sweat, right? So if it's on data collector, be nice and clean for you to look at. So I've got the legal description here. I've got everything. So now then, you could also take and put the quad map as a background and do the very same thing if you wanted to. So now what we're going to look at is we've got this created. Um, if there again, like I said, if I wanted to, I could take that quad map and I could put it as a background like I did in the, um, the video or the, um, where I was at the, um, on the property, front of my, wherever I was at on the front of the property there trying to survey. Um, so I can have different backgrounds. The disclaimer here is that I can't, there's some kind of hiccup with the way business center does this, but for some reason that PDF if I try to georeference it and do what I'm fixing to show you, the PDF, when I bring it over data collector, it gives me an error. 
I know I have done this a hundred times before where I've georeferenced a PDF, took it to the data collector's background and said, ain't that awesome. For some reason nowadays, it's not working. But if I have an image behind it like this GeoTIFF, it works. So let me show you how this happens. Okay, so we've got all this, right? So this little button up here that says capture, that button creates the world file that you need. We're gonna, we're gonna snap a picture of the screen and we're gonna create a world file and that's gonna go to the data collector and I'm gonna show you guys how that works. So what we're going to do, you can see where I've already done this once. I am going to delete that so we don't have to look at it. So uh, if I zoom down in here, here's my survey that I'm worried about and I can say apply. So I've got a background map now. So now let's go to Trimble Access. I'll just pull it up on this screen. Trimble Access, now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look for uh, this, this image that I just created. So how I'm gonna look for the image, I'm gonna go back to Documents, Trimble Business Center. I'm gonna go back to my project and there's snapshots. So snapshot is going to give me the, uh, where my background map is and my JPEGs at, right? So I'm gonna take those and I'm going to copy those. And I just said cut, that wasn't a great idea, was it? How about copy? So I'm gonna copy those. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick them on Trimble Access. So I've got the emulator here on my computer, but this works the same way in, um, on the TSC7. So we're gonna to go to program data. Then I'm gonna go down to Trimble. And then I'm gonna to go to Trimble Access 2019. I'm looking for Trimble data. I'm looking for projects. Um, I've got a uh, background map. That's probably where I'm at. Okay, so there it is. Let's paste. Okay, now then let's go and see background map. As you can see, we turn on, we turn it off. We say accept, there it is. So there's the image that we captured in Business Center. Like I said, I can put uh, a, um, an aerial photograph as a background. I can put a quad map as a background, but in order to get that PDF, you're gonna have to have Business Center. Now here's the sad part. You gotta have Business Center advanced. Business Center Intermediate and Base does not do this. You got to have Business Center Advanced. That's like $3,500. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Because with, with Advanced, I've got so many other tools. I can process my own static data like some of the other videos I've showed you guys. Um, we're gonna get a little bit more depth later on and I'm gonna show you guys how to process and adjust all your data as well. Uh, even the scanning data because that's actually been a question here lately. So, um, that's how you get a background map on the um, on um, your data collector. So hopefully I didn't run through this too quick. I didn't want this video to be super long, but I really want to kind of get my point across um, of how you can do this. So um, as you zoom in, you can see it's a georeferenced image. I can see my survey and I can see my background. I think it's pretty cool. Um, all these other crazy background stuff that I've seen with the, the um, you know, like, like this um, web map service. Mm. It's not the maps I'm looking for. Yeah, I can look on my phone and, and figure out where I'm at. I'm surveying. I want, I want an up-to-date aerial image and I also want um, my survey. Now this same thing applies if you've got a drone and you fly uh, you've got an up-to-date image, you can take that GeoTIFF, do exactly the same thing I'm doing here. Any GeoTIFF will come right into Business Center this way. So, um, hope that helps you guys. Um, close this out. Yep. So, um, man, if you've got any questions, hit me up. Um, as always, you know, I appreciate you guys liking and subscribing to these videos. Um, the um, uh, background images I think are pretty awesome. I think it, uh, especially, and, and really this has kind of become a thing with the TSC7. You can do all this with the TSC3, but that screen is so small, that three inch screen. 
it just makes it tough and the uh, um, the quality of the image is not as good a tsc 7's got a pretty good background map and you know guys you think outside the box right this could be a um, something construction staking you're doing and you've got a set of plans you could do the very same thing just remember you need something for a background in order for this thing to capture like i said for some reason this pdf is not capturing right right so anyways guys like and subscribe um uh, we'll see you guys in the next video and you probably do or do not know if you can tell but i'm sitting in green greer greer south carolina right outside of greenville and i'm sitting in my stepdaughter's dining room with a green screen behind me <laughs> so <laughs> i wanted to get this done and get this out to you guys so i brought all my gear with me on vacation so hope you appreciate it and as always guys be safe out there and um hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe catch you guys in the next one take care ah oh, finally pizza guys here Good stuff.